Hi Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything which is about enjoying old books and um, and scissors. Um, a box has arrived, a box, so I thought I'd have a little surprise extra unboxing video. I'm pretty sure I know what's in here. It's either Regency Romances or Reader's Digest condensed books, or it could be something completely different. Or local so cheese. Let's buy. Oh no, no, it's not the cheese. It's not the, cheese um, the cheese comes in a shiny silver padded very space packet that looks yeah. like something out of Space 1999 or Blake Seven. I don't think Blake Seven could ever have anything quite that classic as cheese. That was wrapping. Right. <laughs> it was good. It was great. Okay, so relatively mystery box being opened. Aha, yes. It is some Georgette Hayer novels. Hooray! So it's the Regency romance possibility of the two things it could be. And they're, they're pan giants, so uh, pan being paperback publisher. Um, and these historical novels I remember being around a lot when I was a kid, being read by older relatives. I had zero interest in them, but I read one. I, one to, I bought a random set of pans, one of which was Georgette Hayer, read one on holiday, and it was fantastic. Like super enjoyable, it was funny, plot drives along, kind of like I think I said I said in an earlier video, I'll refer you to again, um, that if you've ever balked at Jane Austen, it was a little bit like that, but with more action. You know, if you ever thought this Jane Austen book's okay, but it'd be wouldn't it be great if there was something involving a secret passage? or the possibility of a duel being fought or whatever. So um, also, apparently she did loads of research. So there's that as well. So we've got The Reluctant Widow, condemned to a life of drudgery until fate made her the bride to a fast dying rake. A fast dying rake. Do like this kind of thing where the, the painting on the cover is reprised in duotone on the back. So uh, do like some reluctant widow. That's, that's that's the that's the good stuff. And the grand Sophie. I think I've heard people mentioning this one as one of the sort of top five or whatever. A rollicking Regency comedy. You will not forget the beguiling and shameless Sophie. And there she is. Um, not only beguiling and shameless, she has a pet monkey on her shoulder. <laughs> Sophie. Irresistible. Of all the things that you could have said, that wasn't what I was expecting. Not only does she have a pet monkey on her shoulder, a pet monkey wearing a green fez. Of course. It is. And a pair of dungarees. And she's irresistible, audacious, captivating, delightful. So, um, yeah, that looks good. Fresh from the ballrooms and battlefields of Wellington's Europe, the dashing, unconventional Sophie disrupts her aunt's staid London household. All great fun, reported the Daily Herald. OK, The Foundling. So, um, Georgette Heyer now at the top of her robust form, the young Duke of Sale breaks loose from his mollycoddling guardian and servants and plunges into a new and dangerous world when he meets the beautiful foundling, Belinda, decoy for a ruthless blackmailer. The pace and excitement never flag in this, it says in capitals, which is, according to Punch magazine, the most rollicking of Georgette Heyer's Regency novels. Have we had the word rollicking already? I think we have. I think you might get it again. Good, let's I rollick. Think it, it goes with the territory. Spilling over with action, romance, and comedy, a full blooded novel of Regency days. Five shillings. Um, 
Talking of Regency, Regency Buck. Oh, that was a very famous one, Regency Buck. Rich and lovely, ardent and willful, any restraint maddened Judith. What in... sort of face was that? It's a sort of, hmm. <laughs> sounds legit. <laughs> But in her handsome rakish guardian, certainly this is not another rake. She more more rakes than Alan Titchmarsh in these books. <laughs> she met her match and more. Okay. Uh, you might need to explain the Alan Titchmarsh for the readers across the pond. Uh, yes. So Alan Titchmarsh, famous TV gardener. And... Um, I believe he might crop up in Garb August as one of the celebrity reads on Alex's channel. Uh, so, anyway, the talisman ring, Georgette Heyer. So there's what looks like a a lady, um, a lady. Um, what do you call those robbing dudes? Highwaymen. Highway woman. High, yes, a highway woman. Yes. So, a bit of a checklist here. Fantastic graphics. Love, Tick. I've often wanted to know what it was that she did, he did, that was so entirely wicked, she said. It's a mystery and I think very romantic. Robbery. Murder. Among her best, say the Nottingham Guardian. So it sounds like the Wicked Lady, that film, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Um, so this was first published 1936. And belonged to a Ruth Pomerty. Hmm. Interesting. Friday's Child. Friday's Child. I'll marry the first female I see, says somebody in a big orange block of colour. A Regency comedy of the gayest type. Its bow are exquisitely lunatical. Its bells are delish, deliciously feminine. What an enjoyable stage picture it all makes. Thank you, Pan, for bringing these. Ah, Ruth, it's Ruth again. Ruth. I suspect this is a... This is it's Ruth. It's a trove of Ruth's. Um, Ruth beginning with P. Her collection. Um, right, slightly different colour cover style. I've got the other ones I've got to like this. This one is the Convenient Marriage. What we really mean by romance is here, in the swing of the cloak, at the point of the sword. London in the Age of Elegance, a charming, wicked, rakish place. Miss Lizzie Winwood of an aristocratic but chronically penniless family. Where would romance be without financial Jeopardy. disparity mm, between the characters? Mm is yeah. to marry the Earl of Rule for the convenience of his great wealth. But Miss Winwood's affections lie elsewhere. How fortunate then that her rebellious young sister is willing to take her place as the Countess of Rule. How fortunate yet dangerous as dramatic event events following the nuptials are to show. Okay, they're up to six shillings now, so I'm guessing the ones that look like this are a little bit newer. Um, there's another one of those, Arabella, showing a um, the old woman confronting chimney sweep scenario. The charming piece of frivolity about Regency England and the bewitching Arabella, daughter of a country parson. Who arrived. So it sounds like her MO was to crank out a super appealing heroine mm, mm. and weave the story yeah, about that yeah probably with some rakish man and involved. bits of rollicking and, and then throw in the rollicking yeah, yeah. can i just job add to done. that is that whenever the name arabella was mentioned in front of my mother she'd always go cross arabella and i've no idea why oh uh, well no idea so if tube of book knows what to what she may have been referring i'll put this at the top of the tbr uh -huh. to see the the hayer tbr i doubt it was a hayer reference no i doubt but she know. might reference it yeah. she might. who she knows might. finally the corinthian bewitching romance dashing adventure in the glittering days of 
Regency England. Um, and this whole Regency business, I think that's the genre she, if not created, at least kind of was a major part of yeah. popularising. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'd imagine lot, there's lots of hair alikes mm -hmm. as well. Um, a gay high gambling beau, a man typical of his day. Um, suddenly, from an upper window, a vivacious young girl dressed as a boy falls into his arms and the beautiful fugitive's plight offers his own escape. You see, I'd want to start reading that right now. Yeah. So, nine, about ten, great stack of hayers is what's in the box. Another, another box will appear with something else in it, but for now, I've exponentially increased my Georgette Hayer collection, which is nice. Uh, just to finish, random sentence from a sword and sorcery book. Well, that's the introduction. They come ashore almost as a habit and are striking up friendships with some of the boys and young men, worse with some of the girls. Okay, see you next time with something else.